Welcome to a brand new episode where we are in Puerto Galera in search of new species of nudie brand and any other critter we can find. You are not going to want to miss this one. Thank you for joining the dive today. You are watching Critter Hunter. So that was a pretty sweet dive because I got to see a lot of nudies that we don't film every day in Darwin. Um, and I know it's supposed to be a shark dive and they, they saw a shark and I missed it. Uh, but let's face it, even if I would have saw it, it would have been like crappy shadow. You know, the visibility was not good and I'm set up for macro. Uh, so of course I had my face in the dirt searching for critters and there's just so many. Uh, so, still awesome dive, and uh, we're gonna chill here, do a surface interval, yeah. and do it again in a different spot. Have fun! Wow, this Porta Galera is not what I expected. So nice and quiet. You know, it's not Sabang, which is the backside, but this area right here, diver's paradise. And then so many critters. That dive site it was pretty deep. Otherwise, it would have been a perfect muck diving site because there was just critters everywhere. We went down to 30 meters, so we didn't have a lot of time to search. We still found everything. So if before you guys ask because a lot of people ask the water is the same as as Dalwin 26 degrees which is the coldest it gets uh, last night our night dive we I we saw 25 for a minute so 25 26 degrees so that is pretty cold if you're used to uh, 30 degree the rest of the year um, some guys are okay a lot of you are probably laughing because 26 degrees is still uh you know if you live in the pacific northwest anywhere in europe it's a lot colder but you know we're in the tropics and 26 degrees is about as cold as it gets uh at least here in the philippines so or at least i uh, you know as cold as i've ever seen anyway we're doing a surface interval like i said a uh, hundred times look at this view my room is literally right there on the second floor and yeah you can't ask for more <sighs> scuba diving life my oh, main man larry so now we gotta, we gotta spot. go yeah, right up, yes. Can you tell me the name again? Fantasy Reef. Fa Fantasy, yeah, yes. that's what that's what I want to go to. Yeah. I was trying to think of the name, remember I said Nudie City, Reef City, I couldn't ah, think okay. of it. Yeah, that's the one I want to go. Hopefully we can find some right up here. Yep. That'd be awesome. And you said there's sometimes electric clam? Yeah, 100%. Oh, really? Yes, electric what? clam. 100%. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 well, I definitely want to see those. We have yeah. one at Apple Island a while back, and that's it. Right. So that'd be good to see. Yeah, yeah. But I'm really after some rhinopia. Yeah, that'd be nice. He said, uh, yeah. possible, possible. Yeah, possible. Yeah, I saw, actually, we had two there together for, for a time there. Oh, really? But I think it was one lacy and one of the. Weedy? Uh, no, the paddle flap. Oh, paddle yeah, flap. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen one, man. I yeah, saw. Yeah, yeah. I saw some weedy like five years ago in Antilau, that's okay, about it. Yeah. We don't have those. Yeah. We just got some Ambon scorpion fish like once or twice a year. Right. That's right. about it. Yeah. So that'd be awesome to see. Yeah, that'd be cool. So we got a plan. It's called uh, Fantasy Reef. Yeah. 34% oxygen. Check. Let's go. Maybe we'll just have a disco underwater. That's the only 
The only get thing you can guarantee are clams because they don't move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can get one where they're open and you can see the yeah, lights. Yeah, see the mantle moving. Yeah. That'd be good. The blue light going through it. Yeah. Hey, Bubba. I I just to Take it. Dive time. Let's do it. You ready to do it? Yes, I'm drinking. No more octopus for you. <laughs> you took it, me? We get out of the water, she had a octopus to eat. So, Fantasy Reef is in uh, Sebaik Bay, right in the bay, huh? Yeah. Here's the bay, there's a little floating uh, bar that we might go to afterwards, have a drink. There's some crazy looking uh, resorts. Look how high that one goes. I'm not walking on the sixth floor. <laughs> so this is the macro spot, huh? That's some clams. Cool. Let's get, we're good here? Yep, get geared up. So today we are making a very short trip over to a reef called Fantasy Reef and I am promised a ton of macro critters today. And you know what that means, I'm going to see a lot of nudibranch species. Now I promise you guys in some upcoming episodes I'm going to be filming things that are not just nudibranch, but you know me. I love the huge varieties of nudibranch and sea slugs that you'll see on any given dive site in the Philippines. And of course, this one is an Alicia sea slug, and you can find it in our book, which I'll link to in the description below. This guy's also in the book and it's a Chromodora species. Now there's a huge nudibranch community out there that loves these guys. You can even join them on Facebook if you want, but I'm not the only nudie nerd out there. With that being said, I will eventually start filming some other stuff, but not today, because this dive site is full of lots of crazy nudibranch. It's great seeing different locations because although I've seen these before, it's ones that you don't see every day. In Darwin, there's certain ones that you do see every day and you don't see here in Puerto Galera. It's awesome because there's thousands of different species of these and I love being able to find as many as possible. It's pretty fascinating. And then I found this giant peacock mantis shrimp. It was pretty cute. Uh, now divers should be careful because these guys have been known to punch a camera lens and actually break it. They have one of the strongest strikes in the world and yeah, that's why they're not very good in aquariums as well. They can break the glass with a single punch. So this isn't a great shot because he wasn't moving very fast, so you can't tell. But this is actually a big sea cucumber and it walks along the bottom. Those up there are his little feet. And I was hoping to see him walk a lot along the floor. But I would have to follow him for a long time and put it into fast motion so you guys can really see what he's doing. These little tiny fish, I don't know what they're called. But I've seen them quite a few times occupying the hole of other fish, maybe octopus or mantis shrimp, I don't know. These guys certainly didn't dig this huge hole, but they were occupying the entrance trying to hide. They were kind of cute. And then I ran into something that nobody told me we could run into and I was pretty surprised to see. It's a fire urchin. But then when I look closely, there it is, the Colmeny shrimp. Something I always search for 
in Negros Oriental and I've only seen twice way down in Chateau area. I love these guys. It's so colorful and for me, in my area where I live, so rare. So of course it's something I spent quite a bit of time today filming. And eventually I'm gonna try to get a good photo, of course. So usually when you see one Coleman shrimp on the back of a fire urchin like this, you see two. They're usually in pairs, but I didn't see another one. I actually ended up seeing quite a few different fire urchins on this dive site, and they didn't have any Coleman shrimp. So right now I'm just getting lucky. Now the trick here is to get a really close up shot of the shrimp without getting stung by the urchin because that dude packs a serious sting that could hurt pretty bad. And the urchin was also walking along the bottom so it was a little bit difficult. But I actually seen him get stuck or maybe just stop up against a rock. So I got my chance to fill this guy without movement. And you can see why this is one of the coolest shrimp that I've filmed. I love them. So now that I got to play with the video and the video lights a minute, I took out my strobe and got a few shots. They're not the worst. It's hard to get perfect color, but I'm still practicing and I'm happy with it. Now this nudie, he was pretty common everywhere I go, but he was giving me a, quite a show, and it's really hard for me to pass him up. If you look closely, he's eating on a salp there on the front. And I wanted to get a little bit close up of his rhinophores, because they got those weird little, I don't know, flap things. I, I don't know what you would call them. They look like scales. And those rhinophores, since it's so cranky right now, they're kind of getting bent down. He looks like a Brahma bull. So I'm just checking my computer. We're at 18 meters, and we can keep on searching. And as you can see, there's another fire urchin right there. And he had a snowflake eel sleeping next to him. <laughs> I couldn't get close to that urchin, but... There was no coma shrimp on its back anyway. I guess this guy had a little protector. So although I've been seeing tons and tons of nudibranch here in Porta Galera, I haven't been seeing any that I haven't seen before. You know, maybe a couple. Until now. Check this guy out. The locals call this a six-line nudibranch, and it's one I've definitely never seen before, and it's definitely not in our book. I wish I would've saw this guy before, because he is colorful, and he's also really unique and weird. His face is like split in two. It's kind of hard to describe. It's a really weird one. And his butt feathers there in the back, it looks like an Olympic torch statue or something. It's just really strange. I don't know why locals call this the sixth line nudie, but it's definitely one that I'm glad to find. Now this guy wasn't hard to film. Uh, he was not tiny like some of them. He was probably four inches long. So pretty easy actually. So I spent quite a bit of time trying to get footage of this guy and messing with the camera and his face was intriguing. It kind of opened up, kind of like a Melaby nudie brink, but not really. I don't know. Do all of Six Line nudie brink look like this? Because it looks like somebody cut his face open. But who knows? I guess it's natural. It's also kind of a unique color. You don't often see a maroon color like this. I mean, you sometimes see red or orange or purple or whatever, but this is a cool maroon. Then the dive master called me over because he found something and it was this scorpion leaf fish. Pretty cool. Not something I have seen very often at all. And this guy, I, he either just ate something or he's pregnant. I'm not really sure. But you can see why they call him scorpion leaf fish. They got that big old sail. Kind of like a cockatoo leaf fish.
I took a photo and it was okay. A few feet over though, we discovered another one. This one's a little bit smaller. Maybe it's the male, I don't know. But just like a lot of species, you find them together. And this guy was doing the hilarious splits across two corals. <laughs> it was cute. Anyways, thank you guys so much for sticking with me. I promise we're going to have some unique dives coming up soon here in Porta Galera.